Hey guys, Chris from Chris's House here. You know, we get a lot of uh, videos asking us about soldering, so why don't, you know, and I'm switching these over. So Traxxas uses these T Traxxas connectors, which I really actually like these adapters. They're cool, they're made by Venom, the Uniplug 2.0. It's actually, it's decent, it's good. So the speed control we're putting in is EC5. I gotta say, I really enjoy the EC5 connectors. They're they're easy to solder for the most part, and uh, they're they're well built. I don't want to get into the whole smart technology thing, smart whatever. Um, we're not, you know. Got a little interrupted there from a nice guy, Dan. We're, we're he's gonna grab a Gen 8. It's good, it's good, it's good. So this is what I do for all these uh, these plugs. So you can actually take out this center pin. I know people say leave it. Why leave it? Get rid of it. So simply just hold onto the adapter. It's real tight. You just pull, smash your hand off the counter, and then Olivia's. We got two of them, so it's like. Finish it. So we use this really cool. This is actually I think gifted to us by a a customer. So I like to use this flat uh, vise. This is great. It's heavy duty. And then what we do is we actually leave these kind of loose, a little bit of room, and then we place this in there. They have little grooves in there to see kind of what you're doing. You get these off like Amazon, eBay, Jeff Bezos. Okay, we just kind of lock it in there, and guess what? The plug's in there nice and firm. You know, we get a lot of questions about soldering, and I'm always leery on if we want to show you, because someone's going to burn their house down or whatever, and, and you know, whatever. It's going to be our problem, you know? So I'm going to take off about a quarter inch, quarter inch of the sheathing here. And remember, uh, you know, and this is just for informational purposes, okay? Like, you know, guys, be careful. And if you don't know what you're doing or you're unconfident, just don't do it, okay? Or take it, take it to our shop, you know, take it to another shop. It's all good, okay? So another tool we use here is the third hand tool. Uh, you know, one of the hands is missing and the magnifying glass is missing. So it's kind of the one hand tool. And I usually can crimp these both together and, and it's very light pressure. You know, we get a lot of questions too, like won't that ground out the wires? I, I've never had it happen in 20 years of using these. Oh my gosh, see this? Look at how little solder we have left. Please sir, I want some more. Mm, I don't like it. <laughs> It's like, it's weird. Like if we have this nice barbecue sauce, I don't know what the hell a nice barbecue sauce is, but if there's a little smidgel at the bottom, I won't eat it. My wife gets really, really pissed off. And, but with solder, I use the whole thing. Look at this, look at this. Ooh, big boy, big dick boy. We like to use our soldering iron on maximum, which is about 480 degrees. And we love to use this cleaning method, okay? This is a little hacko cleaning ball, okay? These work great. And the best thing is, is like we want a really nice shiny tip. Hold up, wait a minute. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-tin the tip. We're gonna put a little solder on there, okay? And then we're gonna, and that's gonna help transfer heat to the wires, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit of solder in. It's gonna start to heat up all the wires and then we're just gonna add in. Done, lots of solder on there. You can't really use too much solder and, and, I, and I do like that, okay? Same thing here. Now we always have to be careful too. Like if you're more com if you're more comfortable, just do it one at a time, okay? Do it every day so it's, it's fine, okay? So look at that. Heat train, you know, everything went really good there, right to that wire. And we want to make sure, and I'm going to show you here. I want to make sure when we're done, we want to inspect the wire and make sure it's 360 degrees all the way around there, okay? That it's nice and shiny. It looks good, okay? And then we bring over our little jig here. So it doesn't matter what you do first, negative, positive. So, uh, you know, it's it doesn't matter, okay? Clean the tip off a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to just put a little bit of solder on it. We're going to touch the insides here. And we're just going to drive some solder in. It heats up nice and fast, okay? This is the negative side here, okay? And these, a lot of these plugs are labeled, okay? And they'll say, for example, positive there and then negative there, okay? But you, you will get used to it. You can always check your... And what we'll do is we'll tuck one of the wires back on the battery. And then we'll do our negative first. So we're going to heat that up the nice and hot. And then I'm going to kind of press the wire in and then make sure that everything is nice and liquidy, nice and smooth. Oh, I forgot something. Hold on. Did you guys catch the mistake? Idiot savant. He's a very good solderer. He's an idiot. Okay, we got to put on this 
this little insulator. <laughs> okay, there we go. Press that in there. Ooh, it's looking good. Nice and full of solder in there. And we're golden. After a couple seconds, you're good to go, okay? So, and now we've got the uh, the positive uh, wire here. So we're going to do the same thing. A little bit different uh, point. We're going to heat that up. We're going to pre-tin the, the iron a little bit there. That's good. Looks good. And as you can see in there, like it, fi it fills it in nice. Like it, it, it's good. You're like, I can't see. Okay, so that's looking good there. And now what we're going to do, we're going to heat that up. Nice and liquidy. We're going to press this positive terminal in, or pro positive wire, I should say, into the terminal. And you're going to hear it. It's just going to kind of get melty a little bit. Like, you're not going to hear any hissing or anything. We're good. And there you go. And that's it. And, and the reason we really love this vise with this clamp system, this works great. You just simply... Done. Not, you know, sitting there with two hands. And then when you look at your connector, friggin' pro, man. Looks good. Nice and clean. That's it. That's it. Well, let's let's do another one. Let's do two of them while we're at I know it's a little longer of a video, but you know what? So we're going to use our wire strippers here. Some guys use a knife. That's not a knife. That's a knife. Some guys use, oh man, there's some crazy old school. There's some auto strippers. I don't recommend that. I actually like these. You can, these are cheap and they work. Um, some tools like, you know, cutting tools, I, I, you know, buy good stuff, buy Nipex, uh, buy channel lock. It's, uh, it's better. It, re it really, it really is. Okay. So we're going to put the terminal in there. We're going to use our third hand tool. It'd be interesting to see if they have one of these third hand tools that are non-conductive. Like if there is like an actual plastic one, you know what else you could use too? It's kind of old school is, is a clothespin as well. Like guys make stuff out with wood clothespins. So we're just going to go. And I've seen guys put morettes or tape or just strip and do one at a time. Like, you know, whatever it is that, that you feel you're going to be safer with. Okay. So put that back in the holder and you know we get a lot of questions like ic5 ec5 ic5 and ec5 are physically compatible um if you're looking for the smart technology it has to be the ic with that center pin which we, we remove um you know we we field a lot of questions i have to keep my pie hole shut oh look at look at this look at this i'm gonna actually put this terminal cover on ahead of time you know we're inspecting the wire here you know it's it's good it's good. We got solder all the way around. You can see a little bit of braiding on the wire, but everything is coated with solder. So we get a lot of questions, guys, are like, hey, what do you think of smart batteries? Well, I don't know. What do you think of them? Because all I can tell you is I, I don't like dealing with warranty. I, 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 not that I don't like dealing with warranty. I'd rather not have to do with warranty so I know you guys are out there playing. And uh, the smart stuff, we haven't quite got there yet. But you know what? I think we're going to see it soon, probably the next year. It's going to be good. Look at that. Would you look at it? Well, what the heck is that? <laughs> hold on to it. Nice and firm. Hear that sound when you're moving it back and forth, that like kind of scrapey little mouse squeak sound. That's just like the wires, like you want to move it to, it, it like push the heat to the wire, through the wire and into the actual, the, the, the conductor, like into the actual plug itself. These have to be, you know, I, about about once or twice a year, I'll, I'll have some kind of cold solder joint. It's very, and I've never had one with these. I've had it with Dean's because they're kind of like just laid on top, and and, and it's avoidable. Uh, you know, I'm not perfect at this, but uh, generally speaking, we don't really have issues. And there, there's another plug too. Like it's it's done. It's simple. And you know, if you guys got questions, uh, you know, the the real other real common ones we're seeing is. The XT60 plug, and when you put these on, like this is a, a, an ESC end, but this, for example, is a battery end. And uh, you put these on, then you can put these adapters on, you know. And, and here's the tricky part, too. Like, if, if some of you guys out there have shops or are opening shops or looking to open shops, you can't buy Traxxas friggin' adapters. You can't, like, I mean, I like the actual raw plugs. You can't buy them. And good luck soldering those too. You kind of got to know what you're doing. You, it, it, maybe we'll do a tutorial later, but we really can't because we can't get those plugs. So, um, you know, XT60s, we go through a hell of a lot of XT60 connectors here. And then we we buy these extra from Venom or from our suppliers. And then, you know, when you have this XT60 plug on a battery, you can put on an EC3. They even have an actual really cool Dean's one I'll show you too. Or a T-plug, whatever they're calling it these days, right? So you have all three of these as an option. So that's great. 
Uh, you know, EC5 XT90 is coming more popular, so just be on the lookout. But if you have questions or comments, guys, throw them below. And thanks for watching.